everyone is Paige and welcome back to my YouTube channel today and we are going to go over chipping and common mistakes I see from new players, amateur golfers, or people who just struggle with their short game. So let's just get right into it. So the first thing I see is they normally pick the wrong club for the shot that they have. They tend to either grab too much loft or not enough loft and it's hard to say because with short game you can be very creative. So you can hit any club that you want to hit, but they tend to just pick the wrong shot for what you need to do. And it's <laughs> hard to be consistent with it when, you know, it calls for more of a bump and run and they're trying to hit a flop or if they do have to flop it, then they're trying to bump it in. And so I think the most important thing is practicing your short game and trying different clubs out, trying different shots and one seeing what you're most comfortable with. So for example, I love using my 54 and that is the club that I feel most comfortable with. And it is the club I will use 98% of the time and I know what shots and how to work my hands and work the ground and the um, bounce to make the club do what I want it to do. And a lot of new golfers are not capable of doing that yet because it does take a lot of touch and a lot of practice. So they tend to grab, they'll, they'll grab a lofted club and they don't really know how to use it. So I think it's almost better if you're starting out new to use less lofted clubs. I think you should probably grab like a nine iron or a pitching wedge to start out and you'll get a little more comfortable with it than starting out with like a 60 degree, which is very difficult to hit, especially when you're off of a tight lie. So don't make it more difficult on yourself take something a little less lofted. I'm not saying like a seven iron, I'm saying like a nice pitching wedge is a good place to start. The next most common mistake that I see is their setup and how tense they are. <laughs> when they set up, they're standing here and their legs are like almost like locked out and their arms are straight and this is what they just look like. And there's no movement. There is no kind of like flow in it. And you have to have, like when I talk about touch, like you have to work your hands through it. You have to feel very comfortable and you have to be relaxed. When you have all of that tension, you tend to grip the club as hard as you possibly can because your arms are locked out straight. And when you're gripping the club so hard, you, there, you can't move it at all. And that's the worst thing you want to do. You do not want to grip the club, have like a death grip on the club. So if I have like a nice loose grip, it's very, very loose here. Um, not much is going on. Also, you guys always ask what I do when I don't have pockets and when I don't have my hair on ponytail, I put tees in my rubber band. So that's what that is for. Um, but again, yeah, don't be so stiff. Like put a little bit of bend in your knees. You don't want to have them like locked out and straight and everything locked out and straight. You want to just like relax into it. So just kind of bend your arms shake them out, grip the club. Nice little bend, nice little flow. You don't want to have your knees locked, but not super bent either. Just a nice little knee bend. Personal preference on stance and how you like to set up to it. Um, I like to have it just not touching. I don't like it touching. That's totally fine if you like that. I personally just don't like that. I like to have a little bit more of a solid base, but I don't want to have a wide base on a basic chip shot. The only time I have a wide base in short game is if I'm hitting a bunker shot or a flop shot, which I've done in the past. Um, you guys can check out those videos, but just a kind of in between. So just a little bit of a narrow stance. I like to turn out just slightly, not a lot, just to have a little bit of a turn. This helps me work my way kind of through the ball. And then it's just relaxed. You wanna choke down on the club as well. You want to feel like you have as much control over it. And if you choke down on it, you're probably not gonna feel like you wanna have a death grip on it because you already have that control right there that you need. The next most common mistake that I see is that people don't use their body when they're chipping. They tend to hit chip shots. And this also has to do with what I previously talked about with being tense and everything locked out. When you're locked out, you, you can't really turn. All you're doing is this. I have seen so many people chip like this and they hit it three inches behind the ball and they're like, what am I doing wrong? And I'm like, well, you're hitting it like that. <laughs> Why are you doing that? So again, you want to almost feel like your body is turning together. I don't feel any really separation between my arms and my body. I'm basically just turning through it. And to do that, you actually have to turn and move your legs. You can't do this 
and stay down and not have any leg movement. So you want to feel like everything's turning together, like the butt end is almost stuck in your belly button, and that is what you're doing. You're just turning it. That's basically what it feels like. So when I'm down here, I come through and I turn. There's just a slight lift in your right foot, and you turn through it. So I'll show you the difference between no movement. See how awkward and uncomfortable that looks? You're not gonna hit a good shot when you're that stiff and there's no movement. And then the difference. Normally, you can kinda of see this when I do this. I kinda of like do a little waggle to just relax before I go. Turn back. The ball moved on me. Turn back, turn through. It's a lot less movement too, and you can get a lot of energy through the ball when you're moving properly. So if you're not moving your legs, to get it to go where you need to go, you're so stiff and you have to take such a big swing, but when you have movement in your body, you can take it back pretty short and, and leave it low and you have that energy through the ball, so you don't have to take it as far back as you would if you had no movement at all. You always hear, keep your head down. And you do wanna keep your head down in short game shots because if you lift up and look up, you're gonna see a bad shot. But you don't want to keep your head down or focus on it too much where it's unnatural and it stops the movement of your hips moving forward. So I'll see a lot of people chip like this. And then they look up after and it's so unnatural and it's so uncomfortable and it is just as bad as if you look up into it as if you keep your head down way too long. So you do wanna feel like you're keeping your head down, but you wanna let your body almost lift your head up with you. So when I'm chipping, it's all together. It moves together. Your whole body is moving in unison compared to if I lift up too soon, it'll be out of sequence. And if I keep my head down too long, it's also out of sequence. So just do a lot of practice swings and just kind of feel how your head should move. That's keeping your head down. This is not keeping your head down correctly. It's like one of the worst things you can actually do. So it's just following through together, making sure everything is in unison, working properly in the right sequence. It's also a tempo too. A lot of people try to hit as fast and as quick as possible. And I think that happens because of everything that I talked about previously. If you're stiff and you have to take it back far, you have to come down harder on it to get the ball to go where you want it to go. Your tempo is going to improve if you start to incorporate all of these tips into your technique. You can't have good tempo when you're stiff and there's no movement. It's almost impossible. It's very jerky through it. So I think tempo is very important, one of the most important aspects of short game, but that's all going to come with proper technique. You can never be in sequence if you're doing things that are not right. If your setup's not right, if your arms are too stiff, if your head's staying down too long, where it's lifting up too soon, that's all going to affect your rhythm. So again, just do as many practice swings as possible to, f <laughs> as possible to like find that rhythm and to find that technique. And the last thing I wanna talk about is your club setup. Again, I see so many people de-loft it so far down that they have to change their entire setup where they have to move forward, their hands are pushed forward. It's really awkward and uncomfortable when you have to move it down so far that way. That's also where I was going back to talking about not taking a very lofted club. So a lot of people will take a 60 and feel like they have to de-loft it. If you just take like a pitching wedge, you don't have to do anything. I recommend just setting up square for almost pretty much every shot at first and then figure Figuring out how your, how your clubs work through it. From there, it's small little changes. If I wanna hit a lower shot, that's as much as I close it. If I wanna hit a flop shot, it's gonna be a little bit more open, but it's not as big of a change as people might think. It's really just small little movements and mostly how your hand works through the golf ball. If I wanna turn it down, I bow my wrist. If I want to go up, I kinda of throw my hands. That's it. I think people overcomplicate short game and they make it so much harder. If I'm hitting just a basic chip shot, I'm not doing much with the club. All I'm doing is setting up here. It's not 
it's not a very drastic change with what I'm doing. So again, don't feel like you have to deloft it as far as you possibly can. That's going to make you feel like you're stubbing it into the ground. I think a lot of people do this, again, goes back to what I was saying, when your setup's not proper, you have to do so many things to make the golf ball go where you want it to go. But with a normal setup, proper technique, do you see how simple and easy that is? I'm really putting no effort into my shot and I don't feel uncomfortable like I'm going to stub it or like I'm going to hit it thin or fat. I'm just hitting a basic chip shot and I feel very comfortable with what I'm doing. So just to recap, we're going to, when we set up, we're going to relax. We're going to shake it out before we go. You don't want to have any tension in your body and you definitely don't want to have a um, death grip on your club. You want it to be nice and light. With your legs, you don't want them locked out or super bent. It's going to be just like a nice little bend in your knees. You don't need a super wide stance or them touching. That is personal preference. You can have them touching if you want, but I like to have just slightly open, about a, about a club, hat, club head and a half in between. Slightly turned out. You need to choke down. That's, <laughs> have to do it. That is not um, a recommendation. That is a must. And then from here, remember, your arms are touching your body the entire time. You're nice and close. You're feeling compact. Your legs are moving. Everything is working in unison. You are not lifting your head up. You're not keeping your head down. You are just letting the club head almost like bring your body up. So you're letting everything do the work and you don't have to put that much energy into it. From there, tempo and timing is going to come. It's a huge bug. <laughs> tempo and timing is going to come if you do all of the correct technique. And then from here, have some trust and belief in yourself. Don't do any exaggerated movements with your club head and just trust it. It's as easy as that. I mean, it takes a lot of practice to get good short game. And I think a lot of people don't prioritize their short game when it comes to their practice time. A lot of people, when they have only 30 minutes, they're gonna to go to the driving range and just bomb drivers. And I think if you take that time and go to the short game area instead, or work on your putting, you're gonna see a big improvement in your game. So just practice your chipping. You can do some of the drills that we talked about in the last video. Um, just make it fun, do your drills. Uh, practice, practice, practice. That's the only way you're gonna get better. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to leave a comment down below, subscribe to my channel and like this video and I will see you guys next Thursday.